Oh my God, I'm just so happy because we've been talking about this for quite some time now. To me, it's a real gift. I've met the most incredible people all over the world. And, um, you know, they, they, a lot of X-Files fans, you know, all over the world, people tell me about how they met the love of their life through the fandom or their best friends through the fandom or how they went through a divorce or an illness, like a very difficult time in their life. And I've met really wonderful people that have really shared their hearts with me. And, um, and it's, it's really been beautiful. And I feel very grateful for um, the opportunity to, to meet these people and to, to hear their stories. Do you have any story in particular that has jumped out at you over the years that, that just kind of stuck with you in your head? There's so many. And honestly, like if I really think about it, I, I don't want to burst into tears here. I There's been some very, very, um, there's, there's, there have been a few things that have taken my breath away, particularly about people that didn't have very long to live or were contemplating uh, not being on this planet and that they tuned in for whatever reason and it kept them going and it's just it's just the all of it is just kind of taken my breath away because to be part of anything that um means so much to people and actually gives back and is is a positive um thing in their lives it's uh you know it means a lot based on your x-files your time on x-files can you share any moments from the set that were your favorite or some funny ones, something that fans may not have heard about before. We'd love to hear it. Um, you know, my episodes, you know, were part of the mythology and they were rather intense. And I didn't, I didn't get to experience like a lot of the other cast members. Um, you know, when, when you're shooting an episode and you're there for a long period of time and you're able to go to dinners or parties or whatever, I mean, usually I had to fly in the night before and had a 5 a.m. call time and flew out that day. Um, so there, I, I didn't get to mingle a lot, um, but, but it was an incredible environment. I mean, so many people on the crew are fans of the show. And um, there was so much love and creative excitement and a feeling of gratitude. I felt so supported um, and I just felt really lucky, you know, I mean, it was my first big job when I graduated out of university and then they kept bringing me back for years and it was just so wonderful to be part of something so special with, with like a family of really kind people and um it just all felt magical you went from this character that came in that was so buttoned up and then you were um your character was infected with the black oil and you were uh, being held and and then at the end of the, the series you came back and you were back to that you know amazing strong character what was it like playing that i mean not only from an actor standpoint but like having to put on all this makeup and, and whatnot, what was, what was it like working with that? I loved the character. Um, you know, when I started, all I was told from Chris Carter was that he wanted to never show any emotion until I obviously did. And that he thought of her like Matahari, who was this, a uh, very infamous spy from World War I who was a bit of a femme fatale. That's all the information that I was given. I, I thought that she was a, a, a worldly woman, um, that she had traveled extensively, had uh, multiple degrees, fluent in many languages, had a class and sophistication that um, really allowed her easy access um into uh the world of the global elite which is important if you work for the united nations and you're a spy um but i what i loved is that she starts with this cool veneer and um and you think that's all it's going to be because she's trying to impart information she's very aware of the fact that 
Um, she could be caught at any time and killed. Uh, that there, the room could be bugged. There could be cameras. You know, so everything's very, very cool, very reserved, very to the point. Um, always trying to relay the message to Mulder, which is keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. I loved in Patient X when you saw Marie to go to Kazakhstan and go toe to toe with Krychak. Um, they hired a, a Russian dialect coach um, because we had to learn Russian, which was scary and wonderful at the same time because um, they kept changing the dialogue, which is so scary because you learn it in a foreign language and then you have to like learn it again. Um, but it was it was a great process where um, our dialect coach kept putting us on the phone with um, their Russian friends and family members. And they were the litmus test. Like if, if, if I sounded authentic to them, I knew that I got it. And I loved how I felt like in patient X, um, Marita got to break out of her shell and you saw uh, that she was this international woman that had, uh, you know, many secrets. I mean, here she is speaking Russian fluently. And then you see her with the syndicate and the cigarette smoking man and cry check. And, and I loved when the syndicate ran tests on her um, and she was, you know, punished, I loved the opportunity that that gave me to show her vulnerability and, um, and her heart and, and, and how broken she became. And, you know, there were a lot of layers to that. And I found that really interesting. And I loved the end. I loved the end because you saw how Mulder and Marita were friends and they had each other's backs. He wasn't going to say anything, even though it, it behooved him to keep pressing, you know, for Skinner to keep pressing the interrogation of, of Marita. He didn't want anything to happen to her. And, and she showed up because she had his back. And I thought that that was a really loving, fabulous way to, to, to tie up their relationship and the story. What are challenges you faced, you know, becoming Marita? Obviously you, you, you talked about having to learn Russian, um, but, and you mentioned you were inspired by another femme fatale that Chris had spoken about in World War One. Was there anybody else um, that you drew from, um, you know, when you went about preparing from the world, for the role? Well, you know, Greta Garbo played Matahari in a film. So that's a tell. And I've met a number of people like this. Uh, people that were very global, came from prominent families um, in the upper echelon who speak with um, like a mid-Atlantic accent. You can't really pinpoint where they're from, where they were raised. Um, and I felt like that was was important to bring to the character of Marita, where you couldn't really tell where 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 she was brought up. I mean, could it be Switzerland, London, um, the East Coast of the United States? She was just global. And I, I felt like um it was just great for the character because she was she was not only um someone working for the United Nations, but she was an international spy. And I think that she fit into a lot of those big global circles around the world. And uh, and she was able to um, because of how she was groomed, because of her education. And, and I modeled that on different people I met throughout my life. You know, I was really lucky. This was my first big job out of university. And it launched my career. It opened up so many doors. And... Um, I didn't think in a million years I was going to get this part. I um, I got this audition. Uh, I was on my way to Whistler on a ski vacation. And um, and my agent called and said, oh, you have an audition for the X-Files. And I hadn't seen it. But I the only reason I hadn't seen it is because I hadn't watched anything. Like I literally was in study mode. I just got out of exams and school and, you know, my, my, my nose was in textbooks. So, so, you know, 
it, I wasn't really familiar with the show. I just knew that it was big, but, but I read the breakdown and it said Marita Covarrubias, which sounds very exotic and sexy. Um, thirties, I was, you know, early twenties and, um, you know, special representative to the secretary general of the United Nations. And I just thought, you know what, I'm, it's never going to happen. I'm a college kid. I, I'm, I'm just, it's, I don't have the gravitas yet. I'm, I just didn't think that it was ever going to happen, which is such an example of how none of us know anything and to let go, let God, because I didn't have a nerve in my body when I went in and met Chris Carter, because I just thought, well, you know, I'll meet him and maybe something down the line, but it's not going to be this. And I met him, I read, he gave me some direction um, not performance wise, more like, could you stand up, walk for me to be, thank you very much. No shit chat. Walk to my car and my agent called and said, you got it. And it was like, what? I mean, it was crazy. So he saw something, um, he saw something in me that, that was right. And I'm, you know, very grateful for the opportunity. What was it like working with him? It was great. I mean, I have so much, I, I, I have so much to say about Chris Carter. I mean, I just, I think that, and, and I, and I really mean that sincerely. I think that it's almost prophetic. I think he had ideas that were so ahead of its time. And, um, it was quite incredible how he was able to pull together these writers, directors, cinematographers, composers, actors, the crew and all departments that not only um, shared his passion for the material, but understood his vision on a visceral level. And I, I just think that, uh, you know, he had an eye that was unparalleled and he pulled together this team of artists that, that were able to collaborate um, in such inspired harmony. And that, that made the show what it is today, which is just a cinematic gem. Why do you think this show, 30 years later, is still so relevant? There's so many reasons for that. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, first of all, the storytelling was incredible and um, and had it a little bit of everything. I mean, it was spooky. It was funny. Um, I think cinematically, it was it was unlike anything anybody had seen on television before. And I think it really kind of paved the way for um, big, big television. I mean, you know, we, we've spoken about this, how every week it was almost kind of like a mini movie. I think David and Jillian were the perfect leads. I think they, um, they had a, a, a charisma and a chemistry that um, was like lightning out of a bottle. Um, but I think it's a timeless show. And I know that when you watch it, um, you know, it took place in the nineties and we have those huge cell phones or whatever those phones are. And, you know, uh, you know, the certain styles of how we dressed Marita with her yellow helmet hair. Um, you know, I got, I got to chuckle about that, but, um, but, you know, there was a certain style to the nineties, but other than that, it's a timeless show because especially now back then it was science fiction back then it was fantasy. Um, now the United States government is coming out and saying, we acknowledge the presence of, of, of UFOs. And then now we have all these acronyms, I guess that it's, it's UAPs. Now we have really uh, respected um, commanders in the air force um, off the coast of San Diego, the Eastern seaboard, publicly saying we have seen objects in the sky that we cannot explain. They defy gravity, the law of physics, aerodynamics. They're UFOs. We have Bob Lazar, who um, they did a documentary about, but was was on Joe Rogan recently, who I believe, um, who worked on a UFO in a hangar outside of Area 51 
that they supposedly found in an archaeological dig. It's all coming out. And then, you know, recently with, you know, what are these balloons in the sky? And it's, it's, it's never been more relevant. So for this new generation discovering the show, yes, it's a phenomenal show. Storytelling's off the chain. It's visually arresting, but it's also now it's relevant. It's, it's where we're at. And that's why I just think Chris Carter um, is a creative genius because he came up with this stuff and it was, it was just so ahead of its time. Do you have, I know you started to touch on this also. Do you, what's your favorite episode? You know, your episodes very well. Um, what's your favorite and why? If that you Marita, have, that Marita was Marita. in? And Marita, yeah. It's hard because there's little, there, there's things I love about all of them. You know, it's like, like I love Hair Invoke because I felt like it was a gorgeous introduction to the character. I felt like when X died and wrote SRSG in his blood, and then you cut to the door opening and, and, and she walks out. I just felt like that was such a powerful, um, introduction to this great character i loved um unrequited because i i just thought it was very cool the storytelling about the pow's and the cover-up with the government but i also just thought the way that it was shot um the scene that i did with Mulder in front of this lincoln memorial i just thought it was one of the more gorgeous pieces of cinema i've seen in a long time um Patient X, like I talked about before, I um, I loved that interaction with Krychak and that she spoke fluent Russian. And I just felt like that's when the world started to expand and you saw, oh, wow, there's a lot more to Marina than we all thought. And then I loved after Red and the Black, as we went into Two Fathers, One Son, how you saw that she got caught and uh, she became a, a lab rat test subject. And um, I loved, I loved the vulnerability. I loved all the prosthetics they put on me and, and to, to really like work on the pain and, and, you know, where the needles went and um, just the whole story of that. And to be able to, to convey that on film um, when Marita saw Mulder and, um, and Jeffrey um, and, and needed help. I just thought it's really great to see a character that has it so together or seemingly so um, be so broken. That's a real gift to be able to, to show those extremes. Um, and, you know, I loved the end because I thought it, you know, as in terms of the mythology, I think it wrapped up a lot. And um, and I just loved the fact that Mulder and Marita had each other's back. Like on a purely, and let me be clear, it's Scully and Mulder forever. I'm talking platonically that they were allies and, um, and that there was a real um, loyalty. The last question we have for you is, so we asked this to everyone. So much. What's that? No last question. I love this so much. Oh my gosh. We, we still have fan questions. Don't worry. We're around. We still we're around questions. always. We can do this yeah. all day. Um, so we always ask the people that we had the honor of speaking with, um, as Carly is, I'm sure has filled you in. We both grew up on the X-Files and we just love it. And we love meeting fans and these interviews have just been unbelievable, but we always make a point to ask everyone that we sit down with, if you had to sum it up, and it sounds a little cheesy, but if you had to sum it up, what would be your message to the fans? Well, first I would wanna say thank you because um, you can have a wonderful show, but if it doesn't have the audience and the fan love and support, doesn't matter. Doesn't get picked up. It goes nowhere. It's shelved. It is because of the fans that it became this international phenomenon, that it was um, picked up season after season, that there were feature films made, that reboots. 
that's all the fans. And, um, and so I just want to thank you, all of you who's watching because, um, because that's who made it happen. Um, and, um, you know, for me personally, this was my first big job and it opened up a lot of doors and, uh, it was very good for me as I started my career. And, um, and I'm really touched because it was a long time ago, but I continue to meet people and it's like, it was yesterday, you know, people, um, love it. And, uh, like I was saying earlier, they, they, I feel like I'm connecting with so many people, um, in their mutual love for this thing that I loved doing. Um, and, um, so that's been a, a gift. And then I think the other thing just to kind of, I don't know, in the spirit of the show's And it's in the spirit of what the, sh the, the show's theme is, one of its many themes. Um, I think it's very important for human beings as individuals and collectively to, to be seekers of knowledge, to be on a quest for the truth. We are living in this time where we don't even know what's real. There are so many news stations. There is so much propaganda. There are so many conspiracy theories. We are told this is this, this is that. And we're supposed to just accept that reality. And um, I think it's very important for you to trust your heart, your intuition, to ask questions, to um, hold on to your faith, never give up hope, and to actively seek the truth because truth is power and the truth is out there as the x-files always said and um it's just really important for us in terms of our human evolution if marita came back to the revival uh, a few years ago would she be involved in the new conspiracy or what do you think her closure story would be or have been I don't know if it's clear. I mean, I think it's clear, but I don't know if it's clear because I have had people ask me like, oh, you know, she, you know, was she bad? Was she good? Marita was always good. I mean, you know that, right? I mean, I, I feel like she worked for the syndicate when they were working on an alien virus vaccine. And yes, the methods of doing that were not particularly above board, but she thought she was working on a vaccine that was going to help people. I think when she learned about their ne nefarious intentions and that they were selfish and that they were creating this alien human hybrid slave race and that they were going to only save themselves, she was like, I'm out of here. So from the moment she met Mulder, she was his ally. You may have seen her with Cigarette Smoking Man, Cry Check, The Syndicate. She was playing them all, always Team Mulder. And I think that after the um, military trial, um, that Marita more than likely decided to get out of Dodge. I see her relocating overseas, uh, finding other like-minded people. And I think that she's continued to work um, covertly and quite diligently to, um, to help save the planet and all of humanity. I don't think the work has ever stopped. I just think that she's in another location. Talk about your relationship with working with Nick. I'm, we're not even going to ask about Marita and Krychek, but talk about, because uh, plenty of people have stuff to say about that. Oh, I actually do have a funny story. Okay, hit us. It just it came to me. Do and it. it about Nick. Okay. okay. Good. So, <laughs> so we get this scene out of nowhere. You know, the, the scene where we're on that steamship, or I don't even know what you call it, you know, and we come together and we make out and cry chicken and Marita, right? And, uh, you know, it's, a lot of dialogue and I mean, not a lot of dialogue, but 
I was like, God, um, we should probably figure this out technically so that we, cause it just says we're making out ferociously. So I, I went up to Nick beforehand and I said, can we just like work this out technically? I think he thought I wanted to make out. I, I don't even know. I was like horrified. I was like, no, I really just, just want this to go smoothly. Um, and he was like, no, we got it. Hold we got it. Um, we did not, we did not have it. We showed up on set. He came right at me, wham, almost knocked my teeth out. The pain was on a whole other level. I, I could barely get through the scene. It was literally like two quarterbacks, like smashing into each other. And Nick's got big teeth. So when he came at me, it was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, which I guess gave us a better performance because it was like hot and electric, but it was really, there was a lot of pain involved. So, um, so that's my, uh, behind the scenes story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you enjoy doing scenes with him? I mean, you guys had such a great chemistry together on screen. I mean, did you go? Oh yeah. Him? Oh yeah. And, um, you know, I've run into him many times over the years. I mean, he's a sweetheart. He's such a sweetheart. And, um, and I loved working with David, you know, we, we have a lot of mutual friends. I've seen him a lot through the years and David was my, um, my sporty partner. Um, I usually, I'm a, I'm a swimmer and a hiker. And so I usually kind of find like, who's the athlete on whatever show that I'm doing. And that's kind of my way of, uh, bonding and um and and he's a swimmer so we used to just do like laps we found this olympic pool and uh and when i was on the walking dead deny and i found a pool and it's like you know where's holden and deny oh they're in the pool it's like you know you 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 find your sporty people and um you know it's uh it's very bonding and meditative and you know it kind of makes the work easier because you just kind of get to know someone in a very natural environment. You know, Laura, you mentioned to me the yesterday when we were chatting, you were talking a little bit about how you came across some of the, the crew later on in your career. And mm. talk a little bit about the camaraderie. You know, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit before. Um, the crew was a family. You, and, you, you know, you, you expound upon that a little bit. So much so that, you know, you were welcomed onto a set years later having not seen these people in 25 years. Can you touch on that a little bit? Um, that was what was supposed so special about the show is that it wasn't a job for the crew. I, th I mean, it was obviously, but like they really loved being there and there was so much love. And, um, and I felt as an actress, um, very supported and championed, uh, particularly by some of the directors. Um, and, um, and years later, I, I shot a movie, um, and I, I, I shot a movie with Mel Gibson. I played his wife and I came back to Vancouver and there were so many people on the crew that I knew from the X-Files and I was a little nervous, you know, you start a new show and, you know, it was my first day. I swear to God, it was like a big, warm, loving blanket. It was like coming home. They were so unbelievably kind and welcoming. And I would do like a big scene and they would clap and they'd cheer. And it was like, I, I don't, I don't think I've experienced that much love and it was all X-Files people. And it was like, you know, I grew up with them. It's like, we, we were like, oh my God. And so what happened to your kid and what university did, did they go to? And it was just, it was, it was phenomenal. And, um, I think, you know, that's that, I mean, I shot mostly in Vancouver and it just, it always kind of had a small town feel. And, um, and so just going back and working, on things with with the same crew it's just been like it brings tears to my eyes because it's like oh my god like these connections were really real and um like imprinted our hearts and souls you know got to um work on 
mainly the conspiracy of the show, which was really the hard, the backbone of, of the X-Files. So therefore you got to work with the best of the best when it came to the writers and directors. Mm -hmm. Um, did you have somebody that jumped out at you, a writer or director that you really enjoyed working with? Um, and if so, why or who? (laughs) And manners. He was taken from us far too soon. He was a very, very good man. And a phenomenal director. And a phenomenal director. But he just, oh my God, he was like a little kid. You know, he'd get so excited. And um, when I said before that I felt championed, I felt really championed by Kim. Like I felt like he he really got me and my talent and it's just (sighs) I miss him is there anything about Marita that you wish you could change that I could change oh yeah her hairdo (laughs) (laughs) I wish that low lights existed back then yeah. Typically, we don't ask anybody anything other than X Files, but I'm very moved by your humanitarian work. Mm. Do you want to speak about that a little bit? No pressure at all, but if you do want to shine a light on certain organizations that that you you're working with or you have worked with, we're very open to hear that. But please don't. I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, I mean, I um, it's. It's really my biggest passion in life. Um, And so for me, if I'm not working, you know, there's certain actors that need to act all the time. I'm not one of them. I I really love it and I'm grateful when I do, but I really love working with children. That is like my, my heart. And, um, and I've been fortunate to have worked with the international justice mission, OUR, um, I've I've been on many missions to help um, kids get out of very vulnerable situations and uh, who have been trafficked. And um, there is nothing in the world better than uh, freeing a child from that prison. And um, I think more people are talking about it and are aware of it. Thank God. It's not something that you can say, oh, it happens over there. It's the problem over there. It's a huge problem in the United States as well. It's a billion dollar industry. Um, And I think uh, the more awareness there is, the better. And it's something that I'm going to be a part of um, uh, rescuing um, them um, until the day I die. It's not as easy as it used to be because um, uh, I got outed um, by by a, a, a special and uh, and there was a period of time where TMZ would be at the airport and they'd say, you know, Lori, you're gonna go rescue some kids, and so it was it was a little hard for me to um, to go do some of the things I was doing because I lost a bit of my anonymity with some of the shows I've done in recent years, but, um, but there's ways around that. And uh, I just think um, spreading awareness is very important because no kid should be hurt or um, abused or exploited. So yeah, that's my purpose. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you.